Welcome. This is the crack, the code to consistency so that you can run for life masterclass. Thank you so much for being here. I am super excited uh, because this training is going to change the way you think about running forever. And I am so excited to share some really practical information with you that you can start implementing today. So if you have any questions, please let me know over in the chat. I want to hear from you. This is an interactive uh, training and I would love to answer any questions you might have. And I want to hear from you. My name is Emily Delbridge. I'm a certified personal trainer and I specialize as a running coach. And today we are talking all about consistency because this is a huge struggle for so many runners. And I am excited to dive right in and figure out how we can help you, how I can help you get more consistent. Let me just share my screen real quick. All right. So like I said, this is the crack the code to consistency and run for life masterclass. Uh, we are going to be, let me see here. Oops. You are in the right place. Uh, if you often feel like you're not a real runner, this is something lots of runners struggle with for years. They've been running for years, but they still feel like they're not a real runner. And a lot of that is just based around your mindset. And I'm going to help you through that. And you're in the right place if you struggle with consistency because we are cracking the code today. <laughs> Uh, and you're in the right place if you wish running would look and feel easy. I know we see so many other runners out there doing it. They make it look so easy. They're, maybe they're flying by you uh, while you are gasping for breath and trying to make it just a little bit further. It can be very frustrating, and I'm going to show you how you can make it look and feel easy too. And then if you are tired of the aches and pains that come along with running, you are definitely in the right place. And here's what you're going to learn by hanging out today. Uh, the, we're gonna talk about the biggest mistake recreational runners make so that you can avoid it. I don't want you making this mistake. And then we are going to talk about how to make running look and feel easy so that you can enjoy it more and how to gain energy and stop feeling burned out. This is so important if you want to be consistent. We have to start, stop getting burned out. We have to stop starting and stopping because that's where we lose a ton of our progress. And you're also going to learn how to minimize those common aches and pains that plague runners uh, so that you can run consistently. That's what we're talking today, how to get you running consistently. And you're, go you're going to see, we're not going to be talking a lot about making more time. If you want to become a consistent runner, you have to be committed. You have to make that decision that you're going to prioritize it. And, you know, we're living in a time where we have grocery stores right next door. We have dishwashers and laundry machines and, you know, dryers. All of these convenience items uh, make it so that we do have the time to do what we know is right for our health and fitness. And so if you feel like time is a major problem for you, uh, you really just have to make that decision that you want to improve your running. You want to improve your overall health. And we are going to tackle some of the other aspects that really prevent people from being consistent other than time. Time seems to be one of the things that we think of first. It's just like our go-to. Oh, I don't have the time. But there's usually some other factors at play that really are the true a uh, problem from keeping you from being consistent. And those are what we're really focusing on today. 
So this training is not for you if you are not open to trying something new, because I am going to talk about a strategy, um, my favorite tool for helping you conquer consistency. And it's going to be probably new to you. You maybe have heard of it, but maybe you have never taken the actual steps to implement it into your routine. And you are, if it's not for you, if you're not willing to let go of what other people think of you, because as we go on, you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. We're going to have to let go of what others think in order to make this happen. And it's not for you if you're already an elite athlete and you're ready to qualify for the Olympics. <laughs> any, and this is perfect for most any level of runner, whether you're just getting started or you've been running for a year, two years or longer, everybody can benefit from what we're talking about here today. If you've already mastered it, then you probably wouldn't be here. So I don't think that is the case. And it's really, it's not going to be for you if you get upset or offended when someone gives you 60 minutes of free content that, and makes an offer at the end. Because here's the thing, the information I'm giving you today, you can go out on your own, take action and make it happen all on your own. But I have a system in place that is going to help you make it happen so much faster and easier. So that is what we are in store for today. And for those of you who hang out with me until the end, I do have a really fun and super awesome reward for you. And it is my cross training guide for runners. This is a ebook, PDF, however you wanna call it. And it goes over all the exercises that directly support you as a runner. So if you have ever struggled with cross training and not knowing what to do, this book ebook is going to help you figure that out. That's no longer going to be a problem. And if you are not currently doing any kind of balance training, I want you to start thinking about implementing that into your routine. That's something that was miss missing from my own routine for a very long time and still uh, until I really started researching about how to improve my running ability and balance exercises will help strengthen your ankles, strengthen your knees and really help you prevent injury. Your balance is truly important as a runner and there are both balance training exercises and resistance exercises right here in this PDF and I will be emailing these out to everybody that has showed up live today. So you can expect that. And when I made the decision to change my training method, consistency went through the roof. I no longer had hip pain. I no longer suffered with fatigue and I no longer procrastinated before each and every run. I used to get ready for my run and just sit around and just kind of you know, I just wasn't super excited to get out there. I wanted that end result, that endorphin rush at the end, but it was still really hard to push myself to get out there. And when I changed my method of training, uh, it's no longer a problem. I put on my running gear and I'm out the door. And this one here, I was a little bit not sure if I wanted to share this with you or not, but how I got started, uh, you know, I don't focus on weight loss anymore. I'm not a weight loss coach, uh, but this is how I got started is I had, I have two boys. Uh, they are now, one's almost 12 and one is seven. And after my, I had my second son uh, that was just prior to this August 2013 picture. Uh, I had him in April 2013 and I just had zero muscle tone and I really just committed to making a change. I really changed up my diet. I probably overdid it on my diet and didn't wasn't eating quite enough and I was lifting. You know, I really just I've always loved fitness, but this is the time in my life that I went like all in. I was like, this is uh, something I am very interested <laughs> to conquer. And, you know, my brother, he is in the military, so he was a big uh, motivator for me too. And by June 2014, I had shed a lot of fat 
and I felt so much better. And this is where I really started shifting my mindset to where I just wanted to share uh, what I had learned with everybody. And the things that I had learned at this point in my life were all self-taught. You know, I was experimenting nonstop and I just really felt proud of this moment when I was able to uh, shed this weight. And I wanted to give you guys uh, an example of how I've overcome some obstacles to my health and fitness. You know, sometimes we see people who are, you know, they look the part of being healthy. Uh, they're a little bit slimmer and we think that it's easy for them and that they're just naturally that way. And the truth is most people are putting in the effort. They have to put in work in order to maintain um, a healthy body composition, a healthy look. Uh, and I wanted to show that I have, you know, had to come overcome some mindset issues myself. And I, it hasn't always been easy for me. Um, back in 2009, that was right after my first son. So I ran a half marathon with my sister. I'm here on the left. My sister and I, we do look quite a bit alike, although we are uh, four years apart. So my sister and I, she was my, she's my running buddy. And we ran the 2009 Rock and Roll Chicago. It was just the half marathon. And we had never run anything before. We trained on our own. We didn't know a thing. And <laughs> it, I think our results showed that we didn't really know what we were doing. Uh, but we did it. And it was a great feeling. And of course, that was kind of the start of my running, falling in love with running. Uh, you know, it's so interesting how just when we look back in time, so many factors, so many things shape us. And it's hard for me to pick out what are the events that really started shaping me uh, to where I want to focus on, on coaching runners and my own health and fitness. And, you know, in, from 2009 to 2015, I spent a lot of time lifting weights. This is where I was at. My kids were small. I felt like lifting weights was easy. I didn't have access, easy access to a treadmill. And I liked being able to lift at home and not having to leave my home in order to work out. So that is what I spent a lot of time on. So I do have quite a bit of experience with lifting. Uh, and then 2015, you know, we're doing some other small fun runs. 2018 did a really fun family inflatable 5k. And then that's Pretty much when I started really just getting obsessed. I had quit my job as an insurance agent. I was an insurance, personal lines insurance agent for eight years and it was a great job. It was definitely, you know, I was felt like I was on my way with insurance, but then with the kids and I just wanted to be at home, <laughs> of course. Uh, so I ended up leaving the insurance industry. I became a writer and, you know, I, so I was still working from home. And I really wanted to do something, you know, put my focus into something that would benefit me and something that I can help others with. And definitely fitness, it was a no brainer for me. That's the route I wanted to go. 2018 certified as a personal trainer. And I really learned about progressive training and how to build up properly and the best practices when it comes to cross training. This is where I learned oh, I haven't been doing balance training all these years. <laughs> Here, this is what is one, a big missing factor. And then 2019, I realized, you know what? I really want to improve my running ability. Running has never been easy for me. I want to get better at this. And I want to learn every strategy possible uh, that I can to be able to improve my own running ability and help other, others do the same, especially when uh, you started potentially running as an adult. You never ran in high school. You didn't run in cross country. It's hard to learn all the things. There are a lot of different aspects to running. So 2019, I got certified through UESCA as a running coach, and I learned so much about running. This is where I was like, you know, just the light bulbs were just popping. And I learn how to build a proper training schedule. And I just started doing all these things and I was trying to do them all at once, right? I'm, 
I learned, you know, I have all the information in front of me and I'm trying to do it all. And I'm trying to see what works, what works the best, what, what is getting me the biggest, fastest results. And then in 2019, things really heated up. I'm racing. I have signed up for every race I could sign up for. <laughs> this is just three of the kind of the bigger events that I did in 2019. 2019 was a great year. It was a really good year for me. I ran the 2019 Trail Ragnar. I did 16 miles of a relay race. And these trails were technical. And I, I learned a lot from that trail race. <laughs> and I learned a lot about foam rolling. Uh, you need to really focus on recovery in between those legs. And it was just a really great time. It was the first time I had been on a team of runners. I don't have a lot of runners in my own personal life. I don't know a lot of people into running. I really don't. And so this was really fun for me and I had a great time. And then in September, 2019, I got, I went to a big conference called the Summit of Greatness with Lewis Howes. And I got to run a 5K with Nick Simmons two of those days. And it was so cool. Nick Simmons, he is the person behind Run Gum, if you're familiar with Run Gum, and he is an Olympic runner. And it was just so cool. And this was like really eye-opening for me about how important it is to have to run with a group at least some of the time, because a group can really push you and get you to, you know, untap some speed that you didn't know you had. And I ran my fastest 5k right here with Nick Simmons. So that was a really great experience. And then in 2019, uh, in December, my sister, she was living in Grand Cayman. So I was like, oh, there's a race in Grand Cayman. I can run a half marathon, go visit my sister. It worked out beautifully. And I PR'd my half marathon by like 20 minutes and it felt amazing. It was a great experience. And then after all that, I got injured. I think I just, my ego kind of like took over. I'm like, I'm a fast runner. I'm going to keep pushing. And I started running, pushing myself so hard each and every run. I like, I am a running coach. I'm not going to be showing up on social media with these slow runs. I am supposed to be able to run fast. I have been doing all the cross training. I need to continually push myself, even though I know that's really not the smartest way to train. I couldn't help myself. I really believe my ego just took over <laughs> And it led me down the road to severe hip tendonitis. And if you've never had tendonitis, I've had it in my wrist because I did work in a factory for a period of time uh, back in the late 90s. Uh, but tendonitis is very painful and it doesn't go away overnight. I had to take two months off running and I was, it was so interesting to me that I wasn't really in pain while I was running, but what, after I would run and I would go from a sitting position to a standing position, I would just wince and like severe, it's just very, very painful right in my hips. And every time I stood up from a standing position, I would just nearly be in tears. It hurt so bad. So there was no way I could continue running. Uh, I, because I am so well versed in working out. I have a lot of options at home of what I can do. Uh, I was able to still be working out, but I wasn't able to run because when you have a pain like tendonitis, you have to stop doing what's causing the pain and inflammation. And for me at that time, this was right here in 2020, uh, it was running. And I really feel like with the pandemic, and there was just, I just felt like the one thing I could control was my running and I could push myself at running and I could, I was hoping to see some really great results, but instead I wound up injured. And this is where I started making some major, major mindset shifts. So fast forward to today and I set my ego aside and, and now I follow a proven method to minimize in injury. Because once you've experienced an injury, you're going to be much more likely to want to prevent it from ever happening again. Now, I show up more consistently because I'm not sore and burned out anymore. And I'm seeing progress both in my endurance and speed. 
And when you see progress, it makes you wanna show up. And that is where it gets really exciting. Because once we can get consistent, we can start reaching our goals. When we're constantly stopping and starting, it's very difficult to reach any type of running goal. So my entire method of training, you know, really just changed my life, right? It's changed everything going forward. And the moment I chose my health as my reason for running is when that shift really happened. And 2020 is kind of the year for that, right? We're no longer training for races. We, they're not available like they were before. And even if they are available, do you want to participate uh, during a pandemic? You know, that's a personal choice, but it's just not like it used to be. <laughs> I think everybody can agree to that. It's not like it used to be. And when we don't have that motivation of a race, it really, it, it's, it hasn't been a great feeling, has it? It's been tough to deal with. Uh, I to absolutely miss racing, but the time I've spent changing my mindset and really running for my own personal health I've gained so much more and I believe me, you can do it too. And what is going to happen is you are going to be able to run for life versus running to reach the finish line of a race. And I'm not an Olympic runner, that's for sure. <laughs> and even though I might be slightly more experienced than you, I still have to read myself in so that I don't overtrain because we get excited. We start seeing the results and we wanna push harder. All right, so let's, I want you to keep a couple things in mind and that is we have to get out of our own way. And it's about taking action, even just one action. Like this, when we take those small little steps, we can create a habit and we can create long lasting change. And perfection, is absolutely your enemy. If you are trying to do something perfectly, so often we just never do anything at all. And it's so important that you develop a strong foundation in the beginning. So pop quiz. <laughs> you know, I can't even see the chat. Let me see if we got any chat going on here. So this is the pop quiz. I don't see anyone saying hello in the chat. That's okay. Uh, but if you want to answer this pop quiz, I'd love to hear from you. So what is the biggest mistake recreational runners make? And let's see here. You're going to push hard, pushing hard each and every run. Jericho, hello. Thank you for saying hi. So pushing hard each and every run, fueling their run with candy not hydrating properly or skipping their warm up. What do you think is the biggest uh, mistake? Carla, hi, thanks for <laughs> E, all of the above. They, you know, all of these can be problems, but one really uh, stands out above the rest. And if you chose A, pushing hard each and every run, you would be right. Pushing hard each and every run. I want you to think about what your running intensity feels like for you. Most recreational runners are a poor gauge of easy runs. It's kind of like our gauge of time when we're planking, <laughs> right? When we are planking, time is going so slow, right? And we can't, we're not really a good gauge of the time. And it's similar to our running intensity. We're just not equipped to automatically know what a particular intensity is for uh, ourselves. And it's also similar to our gauge of macros. If you've never tracked macros before, macros are uh, the tracking of calories, uh, but also the tracking of your protein, fat, and carbs. And if you've never tracked your macros before, and then you start inputting everything you eat during a day, just gonna throw it out there that you're probably eating a whole lot more carbs than you thought. <laughs> That's the general consensus. So, uh, it's interesting when we start uh, 
doing things in order to track and see, and it allows us to gauge uh, where we're at. And we, when we don't have those systems in place, it's so hard to know. So I wanted to show you this sample training schedule and you can get free training schedules out there. I don't know if you've ever done that before. Uh, Hal Higdon has great training schedules, Jeff Galloway, great training schedules and they're available for, to you for free. Uh, but you'll notice something that on training schedules and that is uh, you'll find easy running that is usually listed. You'll find a tempo run and you're gonna find fast paced runs. Now easy running, they usually say is like running at a conversational pace. A tempo run is when you're running, usually they use the mark of a 10K. So you wanna be running a little bit slower than your 5K pace. So if you know what your 10K pace is, usually that would be your tempo run pace if you're training for a 5K. So you can think of it as like 30 seconds to a minute slower than your race pace for a 5K. And then there's the fast running, which most of us understand that is where you're pushing yourself, you're breathing heavily, and maybe you're pushing to the point where you cannot speak. But what people don't really pay attention to, or they don't really realize, is the fine print. Uh, so here in that same spot where they listed that training schedule, there's a little snippet at the top, and it says, and it gives the definitions of different terms on the training schedule, and it says run. When the schedule says run, that suggests that you run at an easy pace. How fast is easy? You need to define your own comfort level. Oh, <laughs> so, so easy, right? It does continue on to say at a conversational pace, but it still leaves a lot of room for error. Like what does it really mean? And then when it says run, so let's look at the schedule again. Over here on Monday, it says, three mile run all the way down, you know, the schedule. Sunday, 60 minute run, 65 minute run. Are, are people downloading the schedule and really understanding that these runs are meant to be easy? And what the heck does easy mean? <laughs> that is where runners find themselves running into trouble. All right, so it's important to know that what your training intensity is uh, should be mostly at an easy pace. And even this training schedule here should, exemplifies that. It shows Monday, easy run, Wednesday, rest day or easy run, uh, Friday, rest day or easy run, and Sunday, rest, uh, easy run, even though it's not spelling out the word easy for us. So how would you rate your intensity when you're run, running the majority of the time? Is it very easy, easy, moderate, moderate, hard, or hard? Most runners, of course, <laughs> my slide isn't going that well, uh, but most recreational runners, if they're being truly honest with themselves, would have to rate themselves as running moderate, hard to hard. And this is a big, deal. And I think when you see that word tempo run and you see that it's a little bit slower than your race pace, a lot of recreational runners feel like that is their easier run because it's not race pace. We're running a little bit easier than race pace. But no, that's still more than likely a moderate to hard level of intensity, right? So why does it matter? <laughs> <laughs> Running hard or moderate hard frequently can cause a lot of problems like stress, aches and pains, procrastination, or skipping out on your runs altogether. You're going to often feel tired and fatigued and prone to injury. You're going to be a lot more prone to injury because what we don't think about is when we're out there running, that is stress on our bodies. When we're pushing ourselves hard each and every run, our body doesn't have enough time to recuperate, to recover, even if you're taking a full on rest day, showing up the next day and running hard again, you may not be capable of performing at those higher levels of intensity five times a week. Nobody should really be running moderately hard to hard five times a week. 
those hugger intensities need to be, most people can see improvement with just one day of hard intensity a week. Oh boy. <laughs> so those then I show up right. And what happens when you're able to avoid these problems? What happens when you're able to avoid the stress, avoid the aches and pains, stop procrastinating, feel, stop feeling like you're depleted and stop getting injured. Hello, consistency. That's the key. When you can get rid of all those problems, you're going to start showing up consistently, which is it's crucial to your success, all right? So what tool can help you? One, measure your intensity. Two, make running feel easy. Three, make it so you stop feeling burned out. Four, minimize aches and pains. It's your heart rate monitor. We're wearing them right on our wrist right now. I'm going to guess. And so many runners are out there with their GPS watches and not utilizing the heart rate monitor. They don't know how to go about setting their zones. They don't understand what the benefits would be because it's, it's really just not out there in our faces like uh, the no pain, no gain mentality. How often do you see posts about people pushing themselves, push yourself harder, uh, do P90X, do this HIIT workout, uh, do your sprints to improve your speed. That's in our face all the time. We're seeing that nonstop. We're like brainwashed to believe that running is supposed to be hard. It's supposed to be painful. If you are not gasping for air at the end of your run, you didn't do it right. That is what we are told repetitively. And that starts when we're in middle school, high school. We start seeing that mentality. Kids, they really don't have any internal gauge about intensity. My kid wants to go out and run his fastest mile each and every time we leave the house. He doesn't understand slowing down to run further. He doesn't understand why anybody would want to run slow. You know, and that's just inbred in our kids. Like that's what we, a lot of people raise them to believe that. And a lot of kids just, they just don't understand. They just assume we're supposed to be pushing ourselves hard. So uh, utilizing your heart rate monitor, this has been key for me. And when your, let's see, on your smartwatch gives you all the data you need in order to train like the athlete that you are. Yes, you are an athlete. If you're out there running, <laughs> you're an athlete. So many runners don't feel like they're athletes. And I'm here to tell you, I don't care if you are walking five days a week, you're still pushing yourself to get out there, be healthy, be active, and you're an athlete. You just have to know how to use the heart rate monitor in order to get the most out of it, to see the results. And when you train in your aerobic zone or your low heart rate zone, your heart, lungs, and circulatory system have the ability to get stronger and more efficient. And this is something that a lot of recreational runners just simply don't understand. They think their heart, lungs, and circulatory system are improving when they're out there pushing themselves. I mean, your heart's beating fast, right? It must be getting stronger. Uh, your breathing is labored and your lungs must be getting stronger. But no, you have to train in the proper zone, the aerobic zone for your heart to get stronger. So that is a big misconception. And once you are able to get your heart to get stronger and more efficient, uh, it's proven that over time, you will be able to run faster at the same low intensity. For example, now these are, this is truly just pulling numbers out of the air. <laughs> Every person is going to be at in different beats per minute and people are gonna be at different paces when they were first starting out because a lot of it has to do with your initial fitness. What, what level of fitness are you showing up with on day one? So these numbers are totally just an example. So for example, you might start out with a zone of 130 beats per minute through 140 beats per minute. So that's how many times is your heart beating within one minute. 
Now, to maintain your zone, maybe your pace is a 15 minute mile. And after a couple months of consistency, you might be able to run at a 12 minute mile pace while maintaining the same 130 to 140 beats per minute. So that's pretty cool, right? Your body's intensity level is staying the same, yet your speed is going up. So that is what can happen when you slow things down and you train the majority of the time at a lower pace, you can get faster, yet it feels like it's the same amount of effort. And that is the goal. Choosing actions that are in your own best interest is flipping difficult. I'm talking things like eating healthy. Like we know it's in our own best, best interest to skip the pizza, skip the brownies, and go for something like salmon and salad and couscous and the brown rice. But it's hard to do that. It's so hard. We struggle with doing the things that are the, in our best interest. Everybody struggles with it, right? Getting the right amount of sleep, eating healthy. These are things that are difficult to achieve on your own, uh, even though we know they're in our best interest. And when we can forego our immediate pleasure for the exchange of long-term benefits is when just everything opens up. The possibilities are endless if you can forego that immediate pleasure. pleasure. Forego pushing yourself hard. And what happens is, is when we're running at a lower intensity, it's the struggle is with our minds. It's not physically. It's physically easy. You're like, it's too easy. And that's when our mind starts creeping in and saying, this isn't going to work. There's no way this could work. It's too easy. And we feel awkward. It feels really strange to slow things down. But it's those long-term results. Uh, my favorite motivational speaker, Jocko Willink, he says that discipline equals freedom. And I 100% agree with that. Because when you put in the work up front, the foundational work, it opens up so many doors. You are going to be able to sign up for any race you want. I don't care if it's a marathon. I don't care if it's a ultra. You are going to be able to do it because you're going to understand how to train properly, safely, and you're going to look forward to working out. And that is a game changer because you are going to be consistent. When you look forward to your workout, you're going to show up to your workout and you're going to feel good about it. And you're going to feel it's so rewarding to know that you're doing something good for yourself. So this is just a point I wanted to make is that when we know that something is good for us, when we know that we have to be disciplined, it's not easy mentally. Our brains try to resist. They try to come up with arguments of why we shouldn't be doing this because it takes time and patience and discipline. And I think most of you would agree that the biggest rewards in life come from being disciplined, whether it's with your finances or studying hard or, you know, whatever it may be, when you put in a lot of effort, a lot of work, uh, you know, you get the biggest rewards. Now, I'm not sure why you showed up today. Maybe you're frustrated uh, that consistency keeps eluding you. Maybe it could be that you're ready for a change or a new challenge, or maybe you're tired of watching other runners make it look so dang easy and you want to see how you can make it work for you. Or perhaps you were just bored and wanted to hang out with me. I, <laughs> it is a, a pandemic, right? Not a whole lot of things to do out there, but the bottom line is heart rate training rocks and it can transform the way you run for life. It's a big shift in the way you train you have to put up, put in the work up front, and then it just unlocks so many opportunities. And I believe that if you've been on this call up to the, this point, that you have what it takes and the desire to excel 
at heart rate training. This is something you can absolutely do. And you can get started with it right this moment. You can get started with heart rate training right away. And please remember, nothing I've shared with you here today is theory or fluff that might work. Heart rate training is the real deal. So many success stories out there of how heart rate training has improved the lives, the health and fitness of runners so that they can run long term. And this is exactly what I've done in my training to quickly increase my weekly mileage and run pain free, boosting my consistency. What would happen if your you're able to run your whatever it is, maybe three miles, maybe five miles. And when you're done with your run, you feel like you could do it again. Like it was so easy, you feel like you could do it again. How would that feel for you? How often do, do you get that feeling currently? When you finish a run, do you feel like you could do that run again? That is how I feel when I'm heart rate training. I feel like, no, even if I'm running seven miles, I feel like I could go further. And that's how it should be. You should, it shouldn't be depleting, right? And I've helped 14 runners to achieve consistency and pain-free running. And it doesn't matter if you're a new runner or a seasoned runner. It's all about the baby steps and taking action. This is a possibility for you to improve your running ability right now. And some of the big benefits of heart rate training is one, strengthen your heart, lungs, and circulatory system. And doesn't the whole planet need this right now? <laughs> We're in a pandemic where our lungs are being attacked. Our heart is being attacked. You know, you hear people with COVID and they're coming out with more heart problems. And, you know, it obviously is a disease that is affecting our lungs. So when we're building our health and fitness, and we're spending time in our aerobic zone and we're strengthening our heart, lungs and circulatory system, uh, your body is gonna respond better if you were to get ill. Uh, strengthen your bones, joints and ligaments. This is something that so many runners skip. They skip this whole part of strengthening their bones, joints and ligaments because they go right into running hard. And that leaves you more susceptible to injury. IT band issues, uh, stress fractures, all the things uh, that we want to avoid can be avoided by building up our aerobic function. Another big benefit, three, gain lots of energy because you're no longer going to feel depleted. And you can say goodbye to the aches and pains. You're gonna build a strong base and put runner imposter syndrome to rest for good. Yes, running at a slow pace isn't really great for your imposter syndrome, <laughs> but when you show up consistently, when you're surrounded by the right people who support you and understand the process that you are undertaking, the, run, the imposter strip, uh, syndrome just drifts away. You stop feeling like that because you know you're training in the right way. And when you start seeing uh, your intensity, your heart rate, you know, staying within your zone, yet your speed going up, you're going to start feeling so good, so much more confident about your running ability. You're not going to be breathing hard. Uh, you are going to feel so good when you are sticking with your, within your heart rate zones. And if there's one thing to take away, it's that I've literally cracked the code and hacked heart rate training in order to show anyone how to get started sim as simply as possible. And I'm gonna tell you something about heart rate training is there's a lot of information out there about it. And there are so many different formulas, so many different strategies for calculating your zones. And for somebody who is just starting out with it, it's very overwhelming. It's, you, you just don't know what to believe, you don't know what works, you don't, and then you get started with it and you feel like this is impossible. There's so many things that prevent people from sticking with heart rate training. And it's literally changed my world and the world of my team of runners. And it's very much a repli 
replicable system <laughs> that you can apply as proven by the my team of runners. And you can improve your running ability doing this and transform yourself into a consistent, healthy, active runner without aches and pains. It is possible for you. So the obvious question is, is how can you apply heart rate training for leveraging the power of controlling your running intensity, improving your health consistency and running ability? How can you do it? And you have a choice. You can do it the slow way through trial and error by taking some of what you've given, uh, what I've given you here today. So maybe you're gonna take it to Google and check out heart rate training on your own, or you can do it quickly using my Heart Rate Heroes membership. What is Heart Rate Heroes? It is my complete step-by-step -step heart rate training membership, which provides the know-how, the support, and the motivation to help you stick with heart rate training. It's designed to take you by the hand, uh, walk you through the process of getting started with heart rate training. There's no missing steps, there's no confusion. And the biggest, best part of Heart Rate Heroes is the team. It's the quickest and most effective way from point A to point B, you know, getting started to thriving on heart rate training. That is the biggest, best takeaway. So what exactly is it? It's a four module mini course that walks you through the steps of calculating your zones, setting up your device and getting the most out of those zones. You will get instant access, including updates. I am doing live trainings within our community. It's a members only community. And the live trainings are twice a month and they are there to directly support you as a runner, to help you with your heart rate training and other aspects of running. Because like I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of different aspects to running. And especially when you're just getting started, uh, there's a lot to learn. And I'm gonna help you with all those areas. And it gives you a chance to ask me questions and do all of that fun stuff. And it's literally step-by-step -step, guys. There's nothing left out. Getting started with heart rate training is very simple, especially when you can cut through the noise and figure out where is the best place to start. And along uh, with, it's all along with a growing community of kind and understanding runners that are going to understand the struggle that you're undertaking. The ladies and team heart rate heroes, they have about two months of practice under their belts. So they're not very far ahead of you. Uh, they know exactly what the struggle is like, and they are going to be able to help you. Uh, you know, it's really a community where we come together and brainstorm ideas and how to solve common problems that come along with heart rate training. And a lot of that is mindset problems. So imagine having energy all day long. Imagine having fewer aches and pains and letting go of your pace and having a new focus. How many of you are obsessed with your pace and are always checking your pace and are always frustrated with your pace? With heart rate training and heart rate heroes, we let go of our pace and we focus on getting more time in our desired zone running faster at a low intensity, seeing your speed bump up week over, you know, month after month, yet our heart rate is maintaining the same beats per minute. Our intensity is staying the same. And imagine just having a better overall health and love of running. When you are showing up consistency, your health will improve. You know, things will start clicking and you will start seeing the benefits. So heart rate heroes, all you have to do is follow the, the steps that are provided for you. And these are some of the things that I'm going to force you to master. Uh, first, you can go ahead and get more details at heartrateheroes.com. Go ahead and check it out right now if you want, uh, heartratehero.com. 
I can actually, I wanted to post that here in the chat. So let me do that real quick. Artheroes.com. So you guys can go check that out. Uh, and what you're gonna get is there's a video getting started with heart rate training. This is a 25 minute video. That's all the time it takes to get started. This one video will set you up for success. So this is where you're going to start. And then later on, if you want to come, you will come back and you can learn how to calculate all five zones. You can learn about cardiac drift and uh, your aerobic function versus anaerobic. And the remaining videos are closer to 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes. So it's not a lot of time spent. Your time spent is going to be inside uh, the members only area, which is a Facebook group for only our members of Heart Rate Heroes. So let me see here. So all the all those details of how to get started with heart, heart rate training uh, really mean nothing without the ongoing support. The ongoing support is what is the most important in order for you to stick with it. I honestly don't even think I would still be sticking with it if I didn't have the girls in Heart Rate Heroes. Having somebody going through it with you priceless. You can't understand how much easier it is to be inside this accountability group versus going it alone until you give it a try. But I hope that you don't and that you understand the importance of having a group of like-minded runners uh, talking and experiencing the same things as you are. Inside the group, you will get support, motivation, camaraderie, and those live trainings. I also set it up with accountability posts so that you will be letting us know when you complete a workout. And probably even more importantly, once a month we do a progress check-in where we I help you walk through the process of understanding whether or not you are making progress. This is important information. Uh, sometimes you do have to tweak what you're doing. And when we do these check-ins, we can get that figured out and we can find uh, figure out problems a whole lot faster. And when you have some place to go, some place to ask questions, uh, your getting results is so much easier. So how much is this going to cost me? Well, these are coming in out of order. <laughs> what are you going to be paying to master this yourself? So how, how much time, how much effort, how much struggle is it going to take for you to do it all on your own? This is a group coaching plan. So this is where we're doing it together. You're going to be getting a ton of support. Whenever you have a question, I am there. I'm very active inside the group. So I am there for the members to help them through this process. And then my one-on-one -on -one coaching starts at $97 per month. So Heart Rate Heroes is a group membership. So this is group coaching where you go in, you ask the question, and if somebody else asks a question, you can benefit from that too. So it's, oh my goodness, these came out of order. <laughs> okay. So it's not 25 a month. It's not even 19. And the entire system is $11.99 per month. And what you're really paying for, cutting through the noise, figuring out how to get started with heart rate training. Yes, it's important, but that group support and accountability and the members inside there, so wonderful. And they're ready to welcome in some new members. So they are waiting for you. They are putting in the work right now. Today, they are showing up doing the work and they have been getting such great results. And you're going to get two essential bonuses, the ultimate survival guide to low heart rate training, which I talked about a little bit earlier, is that it's very difficult uh, to get over the mental tough, the mental part of heart rate training, because slowing down, it does feel awkward, it feels really strange, and you're going to think it's not going to work. But when you get inside the group, and you'll also get this ultimate survival guide of how to manage all of those things, uh, you are gonna have so much better chance of success. 
Also, I've created treadmill tactics and an entertainment hub because so many runners are out there using treadmills and it's so boring, but I want you to enjoy the treadmill. I want you to get the most out of it. I want you to know how to set your incline so that you experience less pain. These are all things inside treadmill tactics uh, and entertainment hub. So that is waiting for you. And your satisfaction is guaranteed. I'm offering a 14 day money back guarantee. If you are not satisfied with the quality of the content or for any other reason whatsoever, simply email support at myfitnesscore.com requesting a full immediate refund. There's no question questions asked. Things come up, I get it. I'm not worried about it because I know you are going to love it inside Heart Rate Heroes. And I want to share with you some success stories. Here is, well, before I get started on success stories, I want you to know that it's 2020. Like these girls or women that are inside Heart Rate Heroes, they have been struggling with all the same things you have and I have. Like 2020 is the craziest year of all time. You know, several of the ladies have recovered from COVID. One girl, her entire home burned down during 2020. Can you imagine? <laughs> On top of everything else we're dealing with, her house burned down. Uh, homeschooling, three kids under the age of 10. These ladies are overcoming all the obstacles, all the things that we're de dealing with too. I mean, it's hard right now. It absolutely is. But that doesn't mean your health and fitness has to fall to the side. It's still should be a priority. And when you get started with heart rate training, you are going, you know, it does take some time for it to start clicking, but once it does, it's very exciting and you're going to want to continue. And it's so fun looking at the data, especially if you've never trained in this way before. All right. So I want you to know that the ladies in the group are just like you. They have things going on in their life that are, make it hard to show up but they do it anyways. And that is key to getting success, all right? So Carla here, uh, she is a working wife and mom of two, and she stated Heart Rate Heroes is awesome, and I'm 99.9999% sure I would have quit heart rate training without it. And Carla, so awesome inside the group, and she is not the only one that has told me this. S multiple members have emailed me, sent me direct messages saying how they never would have stayed with heart rate training had it not been for this group. And it's just, it's so true because it's so hard to do it on your own. Just like it's hard to eat healthy every day, just like it's hard to go to bed on time and get, make sure you're getting your eight hours of sleep. Heart rate training is difficult, not in the physical way, but in a mental, you know, putting in the work and consistency kind of way. Tip here, Tip says she thought it might be for someone who really, who's really serious about running, an athlete or a marathon runner. Now, uh, Tip is definitely an athlete, but we're, she's working on that mindset of thinking of herself in that way. And since she started with Heart Rate Heroes, she has had sore legs, running feels easier. She's running longer distances without pain and enjoying running more. And this is something that she really has emphasized is that her legs are no longer sore. Like she used to not be able to run. Uh, I remember one day she had stated that she ran uh, six days in the week. And she said she's never done that before because her legs had always felt too sore. But now she's able to truly get consistent, able to show up day after day with her legs feeling fresh and ready to go. Because when you start training at this lower intensity, that's what happens. You don't feel those aches and pains like you used to, and it makes showing up so much easier. So I want you to think about what really has been holding you back with your consistency. Has it been feeling tired? Has it been aches and pains? Has it been just kind of dreading that having to push yourself each and every time you go out to run. This is the solution. And I am so excited to be sharing it with you because it can literally change everything for you.
in the way that you train. Destiny here, she says that she was concerned that it would be too complicated, but it really reinvigorated uh, her enjoyment of running and showed her an excellent path to long-term success with her running goals. You know, that's the thing is when we think about heart rate training and we think about dealing with devices, <laughs> we feel like it's going to be too complicated, that it's just too hard. But that is what I'm here for, is to simplify it for you so you can get started right away, super simply and easily get going and then stick with it by utilizing and leaning on the group, the team. Amanda here, she said she didn't think she could commit 100%, but now when she's staying in her zone, she's not fatigued during or after, and her heart isn't pounding out of her chest. I think a lot of us can relate to that when we're out there. I know before when I was running, I was always pushing myself. I was always uh, really feeling that my uh, intensity was very high even though in my mind, I was telling myself, oh, this is an easy run. This is easier than my race pace. This is, an, this is no big deal. <laughs> You're trying to convince, your, convince yourself that it's easy when really you know very well it's hard. All right, so heart rate heroes, getting started with heart rate training is included along with calculating all your zones. You're gonna learn about cardiac drift. Uh, aerobic versus anaerobic workouts. So that's where we talk a little bit about speed work and then breathing technique. I didn't even mention that earlier. This program is going to keep growing as we, you know, it's going to start getting bigger and better over time. And the price is going to reflect that the price will go up, but right now we're at $11.99 per month. You can go check it out at heartrateheroes.com and you will get the bonuses, the ultimate survival guide, the treadmill tactics and entertainment hub, and of course, that support group. Now, Brittany, she, I, she just recently told me how all of her friends are having babies or have young kids and her running buddies are no longer able to run with her. And she has been blown away by the camaraderie inside Heart Rate Heroes. And it's been so motivating for her uh, to keep showing up and keep putting in the work. And I loved hearing that because it's so, you know, running buddies, they're going to come and they're going to go, especially running buddies that are not practicing running easy. They are going to get frustrated and they'll, you know, maybe suffer with some injuries and when you have a support group, an accountability group to keep coming back to, it is so, it just feels like a security blanket. Like these, you know, these ladies are going to be here showing up and I want to do the same and I want to cheer them on. I want to help motivate them and I want to show up for myself to get those really great results. So I love that Brittany shared that and it's just I want you to know that the group is just such a warm atmosphere, right? Of cheering each other on. And I am offering a one-on-one -on -one coaching uh, service and that is everything that comes with the standard plan, uh, but you would also get the bi-monthly one-on-one -on -one coaching calls, help with goal setting, uh, custom training plan, and a Heart Rate Heroes t-shirt. I just got that in and I'm super excited about those. You can go see what they look like by going to theheartrateheroes.com. At the bottom is the one-on-one -on -one coaching call. I am limiting it to five spots. You can absolutely get amazing results with just the standard plan, the $11.99 a month. You can get fabulous results. I'm sure a lot of you have the ability to set your own schedule and figure out a training plan that works for you. I do provide like a sample plan of days to run and how to lay it out with your easy runs versus um, a little bit higher intensity runs. So I do provide that within the 1199, but sometimes we need a little bit more help, especially if you're newer or you have really big goals. If you're taking on a marathon or an ultra, having a coach by your side 
creating your training plan just feels so good, <laughs> right? So that is why I'm offering it. So I want to be here to support you in any way that you need. Uh, but I want you to know that getting started with heart rate training and being a part of Heart Rate Heroes, uh, the group coaching plan, that standard membership uh, will absolutely get you fabulous results on its own. All right, so this is just a, another option for a little bit more support. Now, I wanna know, does anybody have any questions? If you have any questions, you can let me know here in the chat or you can email me directly at emily at myfitnesscourt.com. I would love to answer your questions. And I listed out a few frequently asked questions that I get. Uh, do you have to have any special equipment? No. Most, of, most runners now have the smartwatches where it will track your heart rate and this device will work. Some are better than others, uh, but I give you some tips on how to make, to deal with it if it's not working properly. And generally they give you the information you need to get started. So you don't have to upgrade your equipment. You can use what you have and you can get results. Some people opt for getting a chest strap heart monitor. Uh, they are a little bit more accurate and they are a little bit less lag, but it's not something you need to worry about when you're just getting started. Like maybe when you get really committed and you're just like really looking to reduce the frustrations of your heart rate bouncing, uh, you might think about investing in one, but it's not a requirement. It's not necessary. I have the Apple Watch. I love my the app I have for my Apple Watch, I did download a five dollar app, uh, and but there's there's multiple apps available and you can get free ones. And the Garmin's they don't require the app; it's all usually built into the Garmin. Fitbit is good too. So whatever device you have, we're not like device specific. You don't have to have a Garmin to join us. Uh, these uh, heart rate monitors are generally. Uh, good for recreational runners and the purposes of heart rate training. And this is something that runners, you know, 10 years ago didn't have available to them. So it's really cool that we do have this uh, technology available now, and I want you to be utilizing it. How much time will it take? Well, there's two different factors to consider when it's we're talking about time. How much time to get started? It's going to take that 25 minute video is the starter video, the intro to heart rate training. That's all the time it takes to get started. How much time to see results? That's a little different. You can start seeing some results within two weeks, but uh, it can take three to five months to build up a solid base. So two weeks, you'll start seeing some hints, some signs of improvement in your pace. And then like in four weeks, things will start clicking. You'll start understanding and feeling some of those other benefits, like more energy, looking forward to your runs. You'll start seeing that within four weeks and you, your pace will start creeping up and you'll be maintaining your zone. Uh, and then three to five months is how long it takes to really build up a solid foundation base of heart rate training. And um, Let's see, will you be getting a training schedule? So we just talked about that. You will, I do provide kind of a generic, you know, how to lay out your week. But when it comes to mapping out how many miles you're running, that's something that you will need to be working on, uh, on your own, unless you sign up for the one-on-one -on -one coaching. Then I provide the training plan and I provide cross-training uh, tips too. And is heart rate training only for serious runners and it's for everybody, it's all inclusive. Even if you have been running consistently, you can benefit. If you're newer to running, you can benefit. Uh, if you are brand new to running, you really do have to you know, have patience and give it time because it will take time to build up that base. It could take longer than five months if you're brand new to running. But you, there is a place for you here. Uh, we would love to help you through that. Uh, so that is where we are at right now. So heartratehero's.com, uh, recapping the modules and bonuses here for you it is the get started with heart rate training. Uh, this is all hosted on an app. 
uh, through Kajabi. Kajabi is like a third party service that kind of is like a, the website host and it's, they do a beautiful job. So I have all the videos waiting for you. You log in, it is a membership and you will be able to see all these training videos immediately. Uh, the getting started with heart rate training, calculating all five zones, cardiac drift, aerobic versus anaerobic, breathing technique, uh, the ultimate survival guide, the bonuses are there for you, treadmill tactics, and then of course that really amazing support group. This is where the change happens. This is also where you get your new live trainings and then they will, once the live trainings are complete, they will be uploaded into your portal so that you can access the live trainings and everything is going to be super clean, super easy to access uh, inside the membership. And it's $11.99 guys, $11.99 to invest in yourself, take action. You can do this and Heart Rate Heroes is gonna make it so much easier than going it alone. You're gonna cut through the noise, cut through the overwhelm and make it happen in 2021. I want this for you uh, so that you can start improving your running ability. You can make it look and feel easy. You can get consistent, avoid the aches and pains. Guys, this is a no brainer. Heart Rate Training is a proven method to improve your running ability. You are going to love it. I am so excited. Definitely let me know if you have any questions. Go check it out over at Heart Rate Heroes and you can be on the lookout in your email for some more details on what is available to you. Thank you so much for joining me live. If you were here live, I will be emailing you out the PDF, the guide, the cross training guide is yours. So I will be working on getting those out to you here later today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this beneficial. I hope you give heart rate training a try, whether you decide to move on with me or not. I am really impressed with what can happen when you really start taking the action, taking the steps and getting disciplined, showing up run after run consistently in your zone and really improving your overall running ability, improving your heart, lungs, and circulatory system. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. I appreciate you for being here. Let me see. How do I end this now? I'll see you guys later. Thanks so much. Hopefully inside Heart Rate Heroes.